Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem named particles taken from today's code forces round. This is an excellent problem which will teach you how to find the maximum subset sum of an array. So in this problem we are basically given n particles with charges C1 to Cn and we want to find out what is the maximum charge of a resulting particle if we can combine particles in the following manner. We can choose a particle and remove it from the line, which means that there's a gap which is going to be created, the left side and the right side. And as a result, the left and the right particles will combine into one single particle of charge, sum of the two charges. So for example, if you have this array of charges, and if you remove minus one, then you combine four and five to get a charge of nine. And this is going to be the resulting array. So the resulting array decreases by two. The length decreases by two because you're removing one particle and you're combining two particles. And an important observation is that when you remove a particle and you combine the left and right particles, all the remaining particles have the same parity of their indexes. So let me explain this observation a bit more in detail because this invariant uh, is going to be crucial for our solution. So let's say we have minus 3, 1, 4, minus 1, 5, and minus 9. And let's number uh, the, the positions of these particles in the array. And if we remove a particle minus 1, so let's say we remove minus 1, this means that the resulting array would be minus 3, 1, 9 minus 9 and an important observation is that minus 9 has just shifted two positions 4 and 5 has just moved into one position and minus 3 and 1 remain in the same position and if you had a few more elements so let's say you had let's say you also had uh, 10 11 12 then they would all shift two places in the front so they would they would all be 10, 11, 12. So everything uh, would just move two places in the front. So the indexes would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the parity of the positions remain the same. So odd index, odd indices remain at odd positions. And uh, even indices remain at even positions. So this invariant is actually very useful for solving this problem because it tells us that uh, when we are combining particles, we are always combining particles which are two apart. So we know that if we remove some element, we are combining the left and right particles, which are a two, which are which are a distance two apart. So four and five are a distance of two apart, and we are combining them. And we are, those two are at odd indices. Similarly, you can combine minus one and minus nine because they are at even indices. And in general, you can combine, you can combine same parity, combine any two of them. Uh, you can combine any two odd indices and you can combine any two even indices, but you cannot combine an odd index with an even index. Because uh, there's no because the, because of this invariant that odd uh, positions remain odd and even positions remain at even positions, and the reason why you can combine any two of them and not just adjacent ones. So, so this is the second important observation that you don't have to just uh, combine two adjacent particles. You can actually combine any subset of particles, and the reason why this is true is. If you look at an example, so let's say we have uh, some random elements, or uh, let's just label them as the same as their indexes, uh, as their positions. And let's say we are trying to combine some elements. So let's say we want to combine some odd index elements. Uh, so let's say we want to combine one and five, and we want to skip three. The way to do that would be, 
to remove 3. So you get 1, 2, 4. And 2 and 4 are combined to get 6. So you get this array. And then you remove 6. So in this way, 1 and 5 get combined. So in this manner, you can ensure that uh, 1 and 5 get combined and 3 get skipped. Let's say you wanted to combine, let's say you wanted to combine uh, 1, uh, 1 and 7 and you wanted to skip 3 and 5. Then you could do a similar process of removing 3, uh, getting 2 and 4 together uh, and uh, removing 5 and getting 2, 4, 6 together and then removing 2, 4, 6 and you'll be left with 1 and 7. So in general, uh, you can see that uh, you can always form any subset of of uh, elements. So if you wanted to form the elements 1, 3, 1, uh, let's, say, let's say you had a few more numbers, uh, 9, 10, 11. And let's say you wanted to form a subset 1, 7, 11, uh, because you have to form a subset of only odd or only even indices. Then what you could do is you could remove 3 using the process I described. Then you could remove 5. You could also remove 9. And then you could remove these elements. You could remove uh, all these combinations. And you could be only left with uh, 1, 7, and 11, which is a subset of odd indices. And in general, you can see that uh, by using this trick of removing all, all numbers except for the subset which you want, you can ensure that you're combining and forming any subset of odd indexed positions or even indexed positions. This means that the problem basically reduces to find the maximum subset sum for odd indices and for even indices separately and print the maximum of the two. And a very simple way of doing that is if an element is greater than or equal to zero, then it will be included in the subset sum uh, because it will contribute a positive quantity to the subset sum. Otherwise, it will contribute a negative quantity and you can just not include it in the subset sum. Uh, the only catch is, of course, if there's no if there's no subset, in which case you just print the maximum uh, number, which is negative. And I just handle that separately in my code. But the problem just basically reduces to finding the maximum of the subset sum at odd indices and even indices and printing the maximum of those two because you can form any subset of odd indexed positions and even indexed positions. Uh, and uh, that's basically the entire solution. Now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea. So uh, in the C++ code for each test case, I take in the value of C. Uh, I actually tried a DP solution for this, but uh, that wasn't in, in, intended. There was actually a very simple subset sum solution, which I got towards the end of my virtual contest. So this the subset sum solution is exactly what I described. Uh, uh, S1 stores the max subset sum at odd indices. And S2 stores the max subset sum at even indices or uh, if all elements are positive if 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 uh, if all elements are not negative then uh, you print the maximum of these two in this case all elements are negative this means that you find and print the largest negative number so you find and print the largest number which is negative and uh, because you need to include, because the sub cannot be empty. Uh, in this case, we know that the sub is not empty because there is at least one non-negative number. And uh, maxi basically just stores the maximum element or uh, handles the border case when all elements are negative. And uh, basically that's the entire solution. You just print the maximum of S1 and S2. And in case all elements are negative, you just print the maximum, ne maximum number, which is negative. 
and you can verify that this code does get accepted. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you have any doubts in any part of the solution, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.